play it. Is what? I said Malcolm alleged that uh, uh, some of Elijah's women were underage secretaries. And can you expound on that? Yeah. Well, they say what? No, no, this is the intro. There. No, this is the intro. I seen them. I seen them myself. It's all true. It's all true. Good evening, messenger. You convinced us that you were the last messenger. How many other bastard children do you have? Barbershop conversation, guys. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. That was nine wise. Feel free to click the link below. And on the phone, we have a special guest, Leon. Ma Leon, Leon Muhammad. How you doing, Mr. Muhammad? I'm good, brother. I heard your, I heard your intro, brother. <laughs> you're a funny guy man <laughs> but before but we the truth is the light. yeah yeah but before we jump into that terrence crawford and bob aaron made news today do, uh uh do you care to comment on terrence crawford taking uh bob aaron to uh filing suit on on bob aaron for his uh for his prejudice and and, and not promoting him and setting him up to fail and racial bias etc cetera, etc cetera? Well, let me explain something to you on that. First of all, Terrence Crawford, I love him dearly. My God, bud. But first of all, thank you, brother. I love you, brother. Okay. Um, um, let, me, let me say this to you, brother. Um, brother Fred. First of all, is a guy took you from, from doing four round cards in York, Pennsylvania, nurse you, took care of your family, back with the Oklahoma, Nebraska, now you want to sue him. The man lost money. I love Bud. Me and the snake had our difference, but right is right. Now you want to sue the guy. You would have, you would have all that property and land out there in Omaha, Nebraska, three brand new cars and trucks and shit, and your children wouldn't be set for life if it wasn't for Bob Aaron. Right. Think about that, man. Right. Think about what you just said. How are you going to sue a man for his prejudice and you're a more time millionaire and you ain't 35 years old yet? Talk to me, friend. Yeah. Can you be listening to these little crazy ass fighters? I know. Yeah, on on the screen I have the, the the six counts: one breach of contract, two breach of contract, three fraudulent misrepresentation, four negligent misrepresentation, number five breach of implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing, and number six torturous breach of the implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing. Those are the six counts. Uh, okay, okay, those six counts, right? Yes. Read that fourth count again, Brother Fred. Negligent misrepresentation. How did man negligent and you a more time millionaire, you wouldn't be feeding them seven ass kids and one for the snake? Let's be real here. Now, I love Bob Crawford. That's my guy. And his father and grandfather. I love both his grandmother, but let's be fair here. We wouldn't have nothing without this man. See, first of all, in a situation like this, he never would have even said no shit like that to the butcher DK or the Dubas, because he know the rare. See, first of all, promoters, certain fighters, two certain promoters. You know the history of DK. He never would have took no shit like that to DK because he knows he don't know if they would be the rare from the street or what. Mm. See, first of all, you got to understand, I know you done had conversation with Chance Crawford. Look at this, man. Pull up his record. He was making no money until he got with Bob Aaron. He had a manager, a net manager who was robbing him. And AM got rid of, all, got, got rid of him. What the, what's that fool Cameron, name that had? 
Cameron Duncan. Cameron Duncan, a retard. I remember when Eddie Mustafa slapped me with the pistol. I had to go get Eddie Mustafa. Me and Bill Haney. See, first of all, and I want your people to understand. This guy, you got to check this kid's record, Bud Cross. And I love Bud. Bud, my man, him and Big Bull Nats and all of them down there. Ray and all of them down there. They're my people. But bad fair. All your guys would have brand new cars, brand new trucks, brand new houses if it wasn't for the snake putting you on. Think about it, babe. When you first heard of this guy, he had nothing. Mm. Right or wrong? Uh, I I don't know what he had prior, but I know he has more now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 I know what he had prior. Uh -huh. What could he have in Omaha, Nebraska? Mm -hmm. First of all, bro, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call Bull I'm going to call Bull Because this is wrong, bro. This is wrong. He never would have did this, this to DK. Of uh, Butch Wood, uh, the next Butch Wood. And he, he wouldn't even do this, do this to Lou DeBello. If he had Lou, because he don't know what coming from downtown. Mm. See, first of all, the best of the snake if you want him. The snake, the snake got power all the way to the Supreme Court. The snake's a bad man. He ain't going to win. I'm telling y'all now, he ain't going to win. The car is snap. Mm. See, give me one more pair of phrases. Read that four again. I want your people to get number four. Negligent misrepresentation. Listen, how can the man put misrepresentation all your big moments, the man put up his money? You and me get the money from put ESP in and all the money you got before the contact year to year, if it wasn't for the snake, Bob Arum. Am I right or wrong, man? Am I right, brother, brother Fred? Well, I, 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 Bob Arum did pay him, definitely. He paid him. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to tell you like it is. You, see, you can only say so much because you're the journalist. I don't no. give a fuck. I'm no. getting from the corner. Sure. I'll say it for you. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's a fair suit. Chance is my guy. But you gotta be fair, man. Mm. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have much as you got now if it wasn't him. Mm. Deshaun Porter Pike. He didn't put up the money. His lawyers didn't put up the money. Snake put up the money. Him and his people at ESPN. What are you gonna do now? Remember what the church said, Jay? All roads lead back home. You mess with that snake, he might well announce retirement because he's done. Mm. He's done, Frank. Mm. He's done. They ain't got to say nothing. The snake got friends all over the world. Yeah, I know that. He's done. And and you know what I I, I noticed too is that uh, Tim Smith and Eddie Hearn have come out and said the same thing Bob Arum has, just not as strong about. Terrence Crawford can't earn any money. Do you think that was coerced? You know what? Tim Smith saying that, but we don't know who Tim Smith with. Did you, did you ever find out, Brother Bray, who yeah, he yeah, with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was speaking on the PBC podcast, so he's still with PBC, yes. Okay. Are you still with Al? Damn. Yes. But my whole thing is, Brother Bray, is that I don't think that this is legitimate suit. What do you think? I I think it was coerced. You know, I I think Eddie Hearn is uh, is learning the ropes, and he says I can't cross Eddie. I mean Bob Arum again. Uh, look what he's done to me. And Al Heyman needs Bob Arum for dates and pay per view with ESPN and Disney. So he can't cross him for one fighter. Mm -hmm. He can't. Mm -mm. So he needs his name. He, he had to learn his name. He learned the American side. Mm -hmm. See, he he understands. He don't have Mickey Duff and his father to really guide him because they they really snakes. They know how to maneuver. Mm -hmm. But why would you want somebody to cross hands? Because you're gonna have to go back that way. You cross hands, you can never be never and you know. And you know HBO done, and you know Showtime 
a Steve Espinosa, he going with he he rolling he rolling with the punches. Yeah. So right. so to now that first of all, if I'm gonna sue you, I ain't gonna now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the court. Mm-hmm. If it come out, the court got to put it out. I don't know. Right. See, see, first of all, he don't think. He's not a good. And then, then, then the people around you, other, other, other than Bud's family, and the trainer Bowman, the Reds, let them dumb as a rock. Well, we wish him well. We, we, we wish well, him well. I wish him well too, but it, it, it's bad. Man. Yeah, well, you have history with bad. Bob Aaron. How would you rate? Is he a racist, elitist, a, a strong businessman, a good guy? How would you, you call him a snake? But because you, you know him much longer than I have, how would you classify Bob Aaron? Bob is one of the best that ever did. First of all, you're saying he's a racist. Ray Leonard was because of him. The late Marvin Hagler family still eating because of the snake. Tommy Hearns still eating the snake. Still getting guest appearance. Still getting whatever you want free in Las Vegas mm. due to the snake, Bob Aaron. Mm. All the all them guys listen, still look at the Spanish kid that that went into a coma for six months uh, on the Marvin Hagler uh, 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 John the Beast of Garby card, Richard Sandy boy. A, <laughs> excuse me, a Mexican. He still takes his hair. I can't get rid. Mm. <clears throat> even though, even though he made my niece and them wait 13 years to get that money. He explained it to me. He said, listen, if I had him, if I had him made him wait, he told me this a couple years ago. He said, he, he said, he, 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 Brother Captain Muhammad, if I had him made him, made him wait, the two mothers would have ran through that money. When the girls got grown, they wouldn't have had them for their seven dad children. Mm. And, and it made sense. It made sense. Remember I told you what he did to my family? Yeah. It made sense what he explained it to me. He said, I saw the, the personality of the two mothers, they done ran through that money and filled up with the girls when they had that when they got grown, they had their own children. Right. And Tiffany, all I'm doing good now. Right. See, 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 he doesn't look at me. I would never call him a racist. Am is a Jew. He's a strong businessman. Mm-hmm. And he out with Don, Don still new business with you. Mm-hmm. A couple years ago, Don challenged him. Or and and champions. So you got, you got to realize what this man has done for boxing. Right. And what he continues to do. When when you talking about negligence players, I don't see no negligence. Mm. And Cam is my guy. The way he feels, that's his business. But I don't see him with it. Gotcha. I don't see I don't see him with it because I understand. Uh, and I'm gonna say this, yes, because you can't say it. Yes, and, and then we go to chapter 25. Yes, I'm gonna say it because you can't say it. The courtroom, most judges are Jews. The network is controlled by the Jews. And if, 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 if you look at all the subcontract, the big, the the the, 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 the closed circuit network, the pay per view network, mm-hmm. all those companies is run by Jewish. Right. You can't cross this guy. You can cross him, but you will get crossed on the end. Right. See, he, see if you cross him, see, see if you cross Luke, the guy in downtown will crack in your head. Mm. So, so, so either way it goes, I wish you well. I, as I said before, Bud, I love you. Bo Max, I love your mom and your grandma, and your dad is my guy. But you got to think about this man. You let me go bootleg lawyers. He's some little lawyer just walking into it. That's all, Fred. Yeah, he has the same lawyer as Mikey Garcia. Oh, that's what I said. That's what I said. It took he, him three years. It makes no sense. You, you got a lawyer. You wait. Listen, you walked away clean. You walked away. Now, think about it, Brother Fred. Would, would it have been over, over two months since he fought border? Yeah, November twentieth. Okay, now, 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 back next week will be, will be two months. Yes, over two months. 
Now, think about it. You ain't got nothing coming up. You ain't got nothing on the table. See, he don't know. The snake done got him already. Yeah. They done got him already. And, you walk away from a guy get powerful and think you even feel it? Mm. First of all, all his guys got power. Brad and Jacob. Powerful the Jew out of Florida. You know all them Florida networks. Then you got Carl Moretti, who's a guinea out of New York and New Jersey, whose uncle is strong downtown. So, so you got to look at it. Then you got the mass make of Brad Griffin. You got new camp. They're good guys. But when you threaten your livelihood, bro, the mm-hmm. end is not. And then all his guys been with him over 30 years, all his main guys. Right. And th- these guys protect their livelihood. They would drop whatever dirt they can dig up on you, bro. You got to understand what, 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 what you're doing when you're doing what you're doing. Right. So you, you take all these guys with him. All the main guys, Brad Jacobs in his 70s, Bruce Panther in his 70s, Lee Samuels down there 80 over his week, Angie Jackson, Miss Angie in, in her late 60s. Mm-hmm. You threaten these people's livelihood and every time with that bullshit. And all these people were good to you. Right. So you know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I'm saying to you. Right. So they got to understand. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Appreciate yeah. you. Yep. That's w- well said. Uh, um, are you finished eating? You done? Because we about to go into it right now. And, and, and I just wanted to be hey, clear. Man, I ain't somebody gave me a bag of chicken chips. I told you I'm broke. Uh, okay. Somebody in the hotel. I'm in the hotel. Sitting around bullshit. Uh-huh. All right. Um, as you said, temple number 25, man, where we left off the last interview, you said, I, I asked you about William Bradley. You called him Brother Mustafa. And uh, I would love to know about y'all relationship and, and, and what year it started and the background. Brother Mustafa, my brother. Good brother, good Muslim. Brother Bradley. Well known brother throughout the city, man. Everybody loves Mustafa. See, one thing you must understand. A good brother, man. In those days, we believed in the honorable rights of Muhammad. May Allah be pleased with the, with, 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 with the mission. May Allah grant him paradise for all his sins. All his sins. Mm-hmm. And all his shirt himself. What they said he did, what he said he didn't do, may Allah grant him peace and paradise. And we better say, Kanye, Jesus, Bismillah, Rahman, and he. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, and uh, when did you meet him? Uh, when did your relationship start? And I didn't know who he was. He didn't know who I was. But you got closer when he came home last night. What year was that? And what did he come home for? I don't know what he came home for. See, one thing, one thing. I come out of the temple number 12, top of the clock. Mm-hmm. We didn't get him 25 minutes. And 25 didn't get in the brother's business at 12. Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever they say he did, he did. Mm. But you know him through boxing, correct? Because he actually had a gym in, in, in Newark, right? I knew I knew him long before boxing. But as I said, you got to understand what I'm saying. Then. Uh, if it's true, I ain't sure coke that. I ain't that you show the coke that. It is what it is, brother. I knew him as one of the top soldiers coming out of 25 when I missed the game. Mm-hmm. But we didn't react as much because 12 took care of his business and 25 took care of his business. Right, right, right. Now, as it pertains to Temple number 25, uh, th- th- there are stories that he was the one with the shotgun. Uh William Bradley, William X. Bradley. Well, you saw all the documents. Yes. You're a New York guy. You didn't heard it all. Mm-hmm. What did you think? I, I believe it was him. 
but I know that uh, or believe that you know him better than I do. And and and, and y'all have had and y'all relationship has spawned that conversation. Well, well, what I will say, what I will say is that you know the brother gone. He's gone. Mm-hmm. But what I will say, bro, hey, man, if you said something in 1965 about Elijah, the soldier would come to get you. Right. 25 came and got him. Right. 25 came and got him. The captain's brother, 25 came and got him. Mm. That's the bottom line. 25 came and got him. Do, do you believe uh, about James Shabazz. So, do you think that he was a co-conspirator be, be, beyond all of that? The the plan in in terms of Thomas Hayer and Leon and William X Bradley and 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 the two other members. You smarter than you look. First of all, let me tell you something. Yes. And I don't care if the guys in twenty five don't like it. I'm old now. God is the best of all. I ain't never liked James Shabazz. Because I thought that James Shabazz put these guys in the mix to cover. Because James Shabazz never, he didn't like Malcolm. Because he thought that he, Malcolm was getting more light than him. See, James Shabazz thing was when, when you said something, brother, did something, first thing he said, did Elijah say it? Like Elijah was God. Man, Elijah wasn't God. He was the God that, that brought it, the poor that come to clean us up. Mm-hmm. I never liked James Shabazz. I never liked. Trust him to mind. But what I will say, and I said it before, no show, I don't care who don't like it, who don't like it, I stand on it because God is the best to know. James Shabazz was a fucking snake himself. Mm. Why do you think Farrakhan, why do you think James Shabazz went they to, used him. They used they men, used him. They used Farrakhan? They, they used Farrakhan. Let me explain something. Yes. Please. And I want your people to listen to this really close. They used the minister. They know he was hyper. His love for the honor of Elijah Muhammad. They fed him to Farrakhan ego. And then you, you heard the speech when Farrakhan came over and said, we're going to find the brothers that, that murdered Minister James Shabazz, a man cleaned up black men and women in the city of Newark. That was rehearsed, man. That came out of Chicago. They know Farrakhan was hypo, and I love the minister and his children. It's, it's, it's such a good deal. Good Muslim family. But what I will say to you, Farrakhan, at that time, bro, Mustafa, to my knowledge, to, to what I've seen first, I, 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 first I'm going to speak on to what I heard, and then I speak on what I've seen. Mustafa was a guy that James called on, there was problem. If there was problem that I've seen the brothers throw brothers out down the stairs because they didn't do what Mr. James said to do. Mr. James to me was not for the lack of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. In my opinion, and I said before on many interviews, good Muslim, but he didn't understand the religion. His paper saying, did Elijah say it? Elijah said it was true. Elijah mouth wasn't no prayer book. I love the honorable Elijah Muhammad. He cleaned me up. Got out of the but eating pork. And being Uncle Tom in the South. I love the honorable Elijah Muhammad for what he did. But right is right and wrong is wrong. According to the scripture of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And all the companions, I mean. You see what I'm saying? So, so when you got a guy, certain guys he James went to, but the guy he counted on was Mustafa. Mm. Was Mustafa. What was the plan? Because if, if can you give us what you believe to know and the conversations you had with William X. Bradley? Go ahead. The bottom line is, is that 25 times for Malcolm. You can't. The bottom line is 25 times for Malcolm. Going through all this Detail, it doesn't matter. 25 went the world think that he did it. That's the bottom line, bro. Yeah, I, I, 
I, I know that's the bottom line, but I, I, I just want to get into his personality, get into y'all relationship because you've known him 30, 40 years the, through boxing. The, person, and, the, 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 the bottom, the, the bottom line is that he went and got Malcolm, bro. That's the bottom line. Yeah. All this, his, his mind, his mentality, whatever the, the, the head said in Chicago, that was his son. Mm. So do, do you think it came from Elijah Jr., Elijah Muhammad, uh, John Ali, uh, Sharif. Who, who do you think? Raymond Sharif. Oh, oh, oh. Raymond Sharif didn't have that much brain to send for nobody. Mm -hmm. So don't even bring Raymond Sharif names. Bro. He didn't have that much brain to descend for his own son when his son's got in trouble. Mm. He could help his own son. Right. Right. So, 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 first of all, it was John Ali, that rat bastard, James Shabazz, and Yusuf Shaw. Mm -hmm. They orchestrated the whole thing, bro. Mm. Nothing, nothing, nothing went down in this area without Yusuf Shaw. He was the regional captain. He ran everything on, on the East Coast in, in this region. He was the boss next to Malcolm. But he couldn't, but he didn't run that out of Philadelphia. Nobody told Jeremiah Chabaz what to do. Mm. Nobody told Jeremiah Chabaz. James, James Chabaz was scared of death. Farrakhan was scared of Jeremiah. He called him ma'am. He said, Jeremiah gonna kill me and my family. <laughs> and that, that's how he got to Chicago. I'm saying like it is. And the minister tell you, he he told him, man, well, be Muhammad. He said, I'm scared of Jeremiah. Bruh. Jeremiah was the fearless. Nobody talked trash to Jeremiah. First of all, bro, the bottom line, he won't talk to and all that. The bottom line is, is that the orders came, Brad and his crew went and got Malcolm. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. All this stuff about his personality, what me and him talked about for 40 years, that don't mean that. The bottom line is that he went and got from the orders out of Chicago and Junior and all of them. That's the bottom line, bro. That's yeah. the bottom no. line. And 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 I I get that. I also want to create uh, the, the legitimacy of your relationship in this interview. See, you, it, it doesn't matter what me his relationship, no, no. Me, his relationship, and all the other brothers. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is that the world believes that he went and got him, and and I'm explaining to you how it went down. It doesn't matter what me him thought about each other, but sure. what he thought about twelve, what he, what he thought about Sam Christian, uh, what he thought about Mr. Jeremiah, or uh, Imam Santi Ali. That doesn't matter. The bottom line That's is right. that Dolphin, the world said he went and got him, he went and got him. Okay, and <laughs> thank you. And do you believe? Uh, what's your stance on Farrakhan not speaking on it now that post 1975, as it pertains to? Malcolm X, and and and, and th th that's the biggest mark on his career for him to speak about that day because he was actually speaking at Temple Number Twenty Five that day when James Shabazz and his hit team well, came back. Well, you got to understand, James Shabazz, James Shabazz was a guy. And if you know his history, country boy was in prison with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yeah, sure did. That's how he became who he was. I always said I, I never thought he he shouldn't have been nothing but but a first lieutenant, assistant captain. He was very smart, very gifted, but he wasn't gifted like Farrakhan. See, Farrakhan's the elegant speaker. Farrakhan's still going. Them guys are going on to some of the ministers that came up with them. They left out. Thousands and all them guys left out. Farrakhan's are dying over the world. The world know about the minister. Kings and queens may not like it, but they invite the minister to their country. So you got to look at Farrakhan used that, but Farrakhan gained from saying things that he shouldn't have said at that time. Think about what I'm saying, how big this man grown since 1965. Think about it, Brother Fred. How he have grown. See, people don't understand. They so wrapped up in what's this and what's that. I mean, when you get to the bottom line, what happened, but you got to understand, see, now your people question, your fans question will be, why was he at 25 teaching that day in 1965 and Minister Jane was the minister? See what I'm saying? Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, Look at what you just asked me. 
Why was Farrakhan at 25 that day because when to keep him Malcolm was there assessment? To keep him silent, to keep him a part of the coup. So if it all went down, everybody got to go. So everybody must shut up. I think. So first of all, yes. First of all, John R. Lee's in New York. Yes. Junior came in here. Junior came in here. Elijah Junior, who just who just returned to allow me a lot of people and me a lot of learning paths that could give all the sense I mean. But Junior, Junior was a nut. Junior didn't have no problem. Junior just talking. Junior came in here, had an FYB, stirred them brothers up and say, y'all letting that red dog talk about my father. He wasn't saying that that wasn't true. The man was fucking young girl. It is what it is. That's what you probably want to know. Anyway, was it true? Do I believe that is true? Some cases I know that is true, but it is what it is. I can't judge the man. I don't fuck young girls when I was married. Shit, but this doesn't make a lot of you motherfuckers, a lot of you people, a lot of your fans come on and some prayer. A lot of them now got wives and, and, and got young mistresses. So you you can't work by what Elijah Muhammad did. Elijah Muhammad going down there 50 years. So people you get this thing screwed up. They got it, 20, 25 something from them. Bradley, his crew went and got him. That's the bottom line. Ain't no more to say. 25 went and got him, and William Bradley and all his crew. And there's James Shabazz. The, the, the order came down, and they went and got him, bro. Mm. So I mean, people, it's the same people that, that, that wants to know this. A lot of them got missing now and been mad 30, 40 years themselves. So they went about what Elijah Muhammad was doing. What are they doing? Right, right. And you said, "Come to me, man. You, you want it from me? I'm gonna give it to you." Yeah, <laughs> you got a, you got a lot of people that I noticed the comments on your barbershop conversation. A lot of them want to know. A lot of them I didn't check out myself to my connection. A lot of them ain't living right. So don't worry about what Elijah Muhammad did with young girls and Kalia and Sister Belinda. I love poor Sister Belinda. That's my sister. But but but, but, but I mean, she, she. I mean, it, it is crazy. What people want to know, and they're doing the same thing themselves. They want to know what Elijah was doing with these young girls. A lot of them had members of their families doing young girls. So why they worry about what, what Elijah was doing? The bottom line is you want the, the real story of 65, they got it. Mm. So there's no more to say yeah. about 65. The man been dead 50 years. Why are we worried about these teenage girls he was doing? Come on, man. The, the reason, okay, okay. The, the reason why is because he's the last messenger of Allah, one, uh, according to him, and two, if he, he wasn't the last, messenger. no, no, but I'm saying who he, he was, no messenger, no, I he's know, he's a guy that came to clean this. Understand what I'm saying to you. See, you wanted from me, you were the death for the last week. Now I'm gonna give it to you. You sat back and you and your crazy people listen. The man came to clean us up. He was no messenger. He tricked us to order to get us to listen to what he was saying. You remember, he started with he started with Marcus Garvin, Nova Du Ali, and all them. He came from that that world, but he saw something that could, could really clean us up. Nobody cleaned up more dope things, and more reform holes. Than, than, than bank robbers and whatever brother was into than the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I give him credit. Show you, show, show you might have fucked some young girls on the side. We all done fucked young girls on the side. I was mad. I, I had a couple of young ministers because they were 23, 24. But, but I'm not related to what he was saying. I don't know what Belinda Ali told you, Ali's second wife, that's between her and last one hour. But what I'm telling you, whatever the man did, the man been gone 50 years. He was no messenger. He was a spokesman for the nature of Islam. We believe that he was the last message. That's how he got us to listen. Mm. So William Bradley went and got Malcolm. Elijah Muhammad had young girls. So what else did them food customers you got one? Do you believe the young girls were of age or un, 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 underage or overage? Because you said you know. Do you think they were under 18? Bro. I, I, I'm just, so, I'm asking for literal answers. That's all. First of all, First of all, I'm on the, I'm on the phone, man. You gotta get in front of that. So, first of all, what I'm saying to you, what I believe don't mean that. The truth is the truth. Yes. In, certain, in one case, 
I know you're going to drag it out and you're going to pay dearly for it. In one case, I know for a fact that it shouldn't have been. But the other cases, she would know better because she didn't really tell you the truth. You're talking about Sister Belinda, Ali's second wife. Mm -hmm. Now, she told you things, but she didn't tell you all that she knew. She was right there. She grew up in that house. Yeah, she did grow up in that house. What's the... So, because her father was Rank Captain Raymond Boyd. He, he was it. a business captain in Chicago like I was a business captain in Philadelphia. I wasn't a security captain. Sam Christian and he, ma'am, Shamsuddin Ali was the captain in Philadelphia. Shamsuddin Ali is still around. He's Mike Tyson's current father-in-law. To Mike Tyson's current wife, took the key key. Right. And so, go ahead, Brother Craig. No, I, I apologize. And can you speak on the um, what you know? The, 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 what, what's the woman's name that you know that was under but, 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 see, I don't know why we won't name 50 years after this man been dead. Well, Tell me the purpose of it no. and let me decide if I want to give it to you or not. Tell me the purpose why you need okay. the sister's name 50 years later. Okay. And, 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 it's and, easy. And, and, and because you're going to pay a deal anyway. Go ahead, I'm listening. Tell me why. It's easy. One, it's, it's, it, it, it's for historical purposes. Two, Farrakhan says Elijah Muhammad is still alive. And three, I think everyone deserves the truth because historic history has to tell the truth you it, it, it's it's like if because if you don't say it then everyone else is a liar on one side and everybody's so i i think it's important that we move forward with the truth and if you have this the, is, yes oh bro, of course i know everything because mm -hmm. i was a captain and i'm still forced with the day and most of all them guys that they're going of course i know mm -hmm. Of course, I say what benefits me, and I told you I would do what you did for me. You look at me, I'm gonna give you enough. But the first of all, I'm not understanding what these two sister names mean to history. Okay. See, first of all, I'm gonna answer your question. Yes. And, and you may drag down, you may find a reason to get it out of here, man, because I know you praise you, you out of Harlem, you real slick. But, but listen to me, I'm just, I'm just cheating with Brother Fred, y'all. They got nothing to do with the conversation. So, what I'm saying. Think about, friend. Think about what you asking me to do, or say, or whatever. I'm gonna say what I want to say anyway. But God is the best to know. But in in cleaning up history and setting history straight, as you said on both sides, you gotta understand whatever I may say or don't say may hurt some people. It may he help help you heal. So we got to weigh it whether this system. Was he still around? Was it her, her, her children, her daughters and sons, whatever they may be doing today, would that hurt them? Or uh, 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 would that open up old wounds that the sister tried to heal up? So we can't look at selling books and selling movies. No. We got to look at, hear me out now. Yes, yes. Hear me out. Yes. To make, to make, to make matters better, in history, and make matters worse in history. That's what I'm asking you. Does it help the sister knowing who she is for the last day? Does it help her family heal? Because you know she done told her girls about it. Does it help them heal? Does it help them protect herself of putting their sister name out there? I, I, go I, ahead. Uh, well, Malcolm X has six daughters, now five, uh, and they grew up without a father. And I, 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 I just genuinely believe that. See, hold it right there. Let me stop it right there. Because yeah. you worried me for the last week. First of all, we're not talking about the Shabazz the sister. We'll, we'll get back to them in a minute. I know all them more some slick shit that all of them done did. Right. So they ain't no angels because they're Malcolm's fucking daughter. Now I'm getting pissed now. We ain't putting them on no pillow stool because right. they're Malcolm's daughter. And Malcolm wasn't no angel. He was a dope seller. He was a hustler. He wasn't no angel. He just straightened up his act. Right. Come on now. We ain't putting this man on the pillow suit because no. the birthday is coming up in, in, in a few weeks. We ain't doing that. I ain't gonna let you do that. Well, oh, I, well, it's not his birthday. It's the night. It's the day he was murdered. <laughs> it's coming up. No, 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 no. The birthday is May nineteenth. Yeah, nineteen twenty-five, Omaha, Nebraska. 
with a, with a chance from chance call. Yeah, but before that, it, it it's the February twenty first, three p.m. Yeah, nineteen sixty five. Yeah, that, that, exactly. That, 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 exactly. On a Sunday. Exactly. On a Sunday. On a Sunday. Shit, I know I'm the whole story. I know you do. Mm -hmm. I know you probably weren't even born then. No, I was you born. You probably weren't even born then. No, seventy seven. I was born. And so uh, you see, you weren't even born, mm -hmm. and you seeking questions. You seeking questions, and my green light going. I'm gonna give you what you want tonight. Cause you can pay to get it. But, 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 but first of all, let's get back to that question I asked you. Yes. How does it help this sister? The sisters, the two sisters I know, they're still alive. Your daughter's got good jobs. They do. They do. She said to me, one of them said to me a few years ago, I'm I'm walking down. Fred, what's that what's that side street about Harlem Hospital? By the front door, as a little side street. 138th, uh, uh, Lenox <laughs> Avenue, Malcolm X Boulevard. No, 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 uh, no. That's Lenox Avenue on the front. It's a little side. It's a little side street with the ambulance square. I know exactly you where you're at. It. Yeah, I, I grew up on that street. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's your block. Yes, it is. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm coming down in one. I'm coming down in. I'm sick as a dog. That's, 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 that's when I first found out I had colon cancer. Right. So I'm in remission now, thank a lot. So I'm walking, I'm feeling bad, I'm throwing I'm everything. So the sister said, looked at me, she said, I know you. I said, oh my God. So I'm like, so she hugged me. She said, these are my daughters. She whispered in my ear. And she said something to me. She said, brother, I love you. As long as you live, be fair with me, because I was always a good sister. That's the understanding system. So we got to talking, and and I said something. She said something to me, and then it dawned on me who it was. Now knowing, see, you heard of the story. After they used the view these sisters in Chicago and passed around, then they put them in isolation. Mm -hmm. This one sister wasn't happening. She knew that she came for 112 in St. Nick, and she knew that her uncle and all of them were connected to, to, to Nicky and his crew. So she wasn't worried about nobody physically doing nothing to her. She, won't, she was told to stand up by herself, to stand up for herself. That's one of them that went to that side door you heard about. Mm -hmm. I know her very well, because she, she had the backing of Nicky and his whole crew. Mm -hmm. And because her uncle was one of Nicky's lieutenants, so, and she knew Pee Wee, all of them, all the crew up there. So she, the one started the ball, bro. But now that she's older, in her 70s, mm -hmm. she don't want to be bothered, bro. She don't want nobody trying to get no interview about that. She done raised her family, God done blessed her with a good Muslim husband. She don't want to be bothered. Right. And since I talked to you, she said, brother, I know you're the street hustler. You're about hustling. You're about, you're about eating. If you can, by God's grace, because two of my daughters actually know, but three of them don't know what happened. Those are two are, are led to be here. Now you checked on what I'm saying, brother? Mm -hmm. Now you're talking. Now go ahead and answer the next question. Yeah, and people want to know who that person is. But but does but, but, but see, I just explained to them why can't people have their privacy? Right. See, they got Ishmael out there. They already know about Tom Nigger and Ishmael and the other and, and two of the other sisters. Why are they worried about this sister? Let this sister live on the rest of her life and long let her be here. Why are they worried about her? What do you want to know about this sister? And then once she is old, brother, it could be God, not you per se. God, the interviewers want to know this. See, Kalila came to you and started something. You know, Kalila's all right with me, and me and Mirage. So she say, but you can't keep starting stuff. Now she got the ball running, got you going, changing right around here, trying to get name of uh, the rest of the sister. That don't make sense, bro. Mm. It don't make sense. Tell me what, 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 what knowing about this sister got to do with history and history being me. Mm. I, you tell me. I'm just going to go through some names. <laughs> yeah, whatever you go through, 
it, it don't mean nothing. It, it, I know, I okay. know who he is, okay. and I know right where they're at right now, and got okay. all them phone numbers. Okay, I know who it is. I can make it happen for you if I choose to make it happen. How? But how if something's going to happen for you, I'm going to deliver for you. But you got to ask these questions yourself to them. Yes. No, no, yes. no, no. You're not going to put me on the spot like that. You can, you can put me on the spot. You know how to put me on the spot. Uh -huh. You don't really want to put me on the spot and let me come, come, come to your public right now. How? You you know how to make me come to the spot right now and, and give it to your public. You know how. It's up to you. How how old was she when she had sex with you? Bro, bro, you grab me for straws, bro. You <laughs> grab me for straws, bro. <laughs> I know you, bro. I got to ask. I'm just asking the question. Listen, yeah. I ain't saying I ain't going to answer it. Okay. You got to make me want to answer it. Okay. You got to make me want to answer it. Okay. G getting back. Would you consider you and William Bradley great friends, best friends, or just friends or associates? He was a good brother, my Muslim brother. If he needed me and needed me, to me, I would be there for him and Sister Cal. He was a good Muslim, mm -hmm. good brother. We was all right. He's my brother. It, it, see, it's different today than it was coming up on the honor of Elijah Muhammad. Right. We had more union under Elijah Muhammad than we got today. These brothers, they ain't nothing. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to call a non-Muslim from California to get my rent paid. And in those days, 25 would have been there in two seconds. I, I would have to call you and your partner. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Think of like, the unity that we had under Elijah. We don't have the unity today. Mustafa was a good brother. My guy, he's gone. You're a log run in paradise. We forgive him for all his sickness. Including 1965, if the world believed that picture was him, why, and I believe it. Why, why, why was it such big hush hush in Newark? Why did the community know, and no one said or did anything for for years, and, and until the documentary well, came out? First of all, first of all, well, who who to say that they knew and believed? Because if you if you weren't in the inner circle, then you don't know. Right. If you look at that, that, that picture they showed a thousand times and that Disney brother that did that movie, he's a nut. He don't know that he's Mark. The only thing saving him <laughs> is God himself. Brother. See, the only thing saving him, brother, only thing saving him is God Himself, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That brother's mom, brother. The brother that kept showing that picture. You remember the story they had on TV? They had one of Malcolm's daughter and had his other nappy head sister, and, and the brother was name? Ishmael. What was his name? Yeah, Ishmael. Raheem. Right, Raheem. Yeah, Raheem. I think his name is Raheem. Yeah, Abdul Raheem. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Abdul Raheem. Mm -hmm. He's a nut. He don't know. He almost got it a few a few months ago. Some brothers said, stand down. Mm. Some brothers was coming from said, stand down. Told, told the brother to stand down. That he ain't worth it. He don't know what he's talking about. He wasn't even around then. See, when you got God jumping in the sun, that's why I'm glad you did it the way you did it. You did it as the world knew it, what you was doing. He did it trying to be slick and digging it. Coming in the new, he almost got it. The couple of days he came to new and asked the mayor, "Why you asked the mayor why you got this guy?" Which the mayor didn't have no proof that was him in 1965. You can look at the picture you want; they still can't prove it. But for looking at the picture and the long white coat, they still can't prove it. Only one knows the one that was there. Can you tell? You saw the picture a bunch of times. Abdul Rahim, Abdul Rahim, the nut. He's a nut, man. So, this Abdul Rahim went to the same sisters, man. Nobody knows these sisters, the last few sisters, other than the one that the public know, but me. But me and the Honorable Minister Louis Fair, son. And I ain't going to bring the minister in this. The minister old, minister 87, let the minister enjoy the rest of life. Allah have him. Leave the minister alone. He's a good Muslim. And the minister still shining. All them other men are starving, all them starving to death. Fair concert, he's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is dude. And, 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 and yes, if you want to know, they use him to come to Newark to teach that day to cover it up. 
You're right. Fred is right, y'all. Fred Barbican conversation. Brother Fred is right. They use Farrakhan to cover it up. They use this man because they know he was hyper. <laughs> they know that he was mad at Malcolm because Malcolm left the honor of Elijah Muhammad. And they James Shabazz and and John Ali and Yusuf Shaw distorted that man. They used his, his personality and they know his hatred for Malcolm to leave the honor of Elijah Muhammad. But the main source was Yusuf Shaw, Joseph 1X Gavin, a drunk from Detroit. Who was Malcolm's right hand man for trading Malcolm for the honor of Elijah Muhammad? You want to know, like, like a lot of you bums that ask and pray the conversation, yeah, she had some young girls. Some was older and some wasn't younger. Hey, that, do y'all want to know? Yes. But if you want to know the name, y'all better press your friend to make me want to tell y'all the name. Mm. Mm. All right, move, move to the next question. <laughs> How, when you look back at it, I, I, I know you just said that he wasn't the last messenger, but when did you wake up as it pertains to Elijah Muhammad? Like the year and date? Can, can you remember or the moment? You know, let me tell you something. And believe it or not, friend, I've been woke. When I saw the shit with that was going down in Chicago and the shit that was going down in New York, it was crazy. And when Junior came in that FOI with that bullshit, talking about he wanted Malcolm Tung on a plot in Chicago. Now, now listen to this. See that? See, Herbert, 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 Herbert and Wallace were the smartest two of them. And, and Nate, Nate's out there, but he had a white woman. He and Pan's father, okay, he was selling dope out there in Kansas City. He and Pan's father, okay, he said, man, my father's crazy. I'm getting this money. Got me a white woman. Only thing I don't do is I don't eat no pork. He had a white woman selling dope. <laughs> they, I guess, I guess he had a city. Man, nobody paid his father no attention. Because, listen, we have something called a number two pole charity. And we, we ain't got the hospital yet. Of course, Elijah had a plane. We bought him a farm and all this. We give this man money and we ain't getting nothing back. He can fucking all these young girls and we starving to death. Let me tell you a story about myself, and I told Mustafa this story a few years ago, and I told Frank Nairn, I was about to be Ali Muhammad, all, them, all the good brothers that's still around out of Newark that was in the temple at that time. I told him, one time we in Chicago, now, Betty, no, no, Esther, Esther and Lottie thought they was queen. Now, my wife at the time, we in Chicago for Savior's Day. Mm. This is 1969, not 69, uh, 70, 1970. And they said, the security said to my wife, sister, you ain't going to have no fur coat. So my wife started laughing. So coming in on, on the side of us is Esther, Lottie, her daughters. She said, well, and my wife, being the nut that she was, being the nut that she was from a, from 112 and St. Nick, she said, they got on fur coats and they bleed every month like I did. So what makes them better than me? I'm keeping this fur coat on. So the brothers, so, so they went and got Raymond Super, it, it, went, it went and got Captain Raymond. He said to me, I said, bro, my wife from the hood, 112 St. Nick, her mother grew up in North Philly. So I, I, don't, I don't tell her what to say. She keep home, man. I ain't letting you go to I'll let her keep home, man. Brother, she said, I, I'm got this fur coat. He said, well, you can't come on. You got to give us a fur coat. Take my fur coat and let it give it to one of Elijah's teenage lovers. My wife said, that's not going to happen. She, and they suspended her. She didn't come back in the mosque five years later when the when man went up to Muhammad took over. So so you see that then they had certain people could do certain things if you were in that high excellence. And, and I believe John Ali didn't testify that with his right, with his right hand. Mm. What so, so first of all, see, some women could do what they want to do, and some women couldn't. And I'm telling you as a fact, I don't care if her children don't like it. Lord and the Ether wasn't no fucking angel. Hmm. Listen, Raymond Sharif wasn't getting no money. The father was taking care of them grown ass women. You see, when Raymond Sharif died, he was driving, he, he was driving a taxi because Imam Wabi Muhammad came and cut off the money. I came to my own realization in 19, 
1973, after the theology of time, when he brought all them white folks on stage, after all them years of calling them devils and fucking all them young girls, now all of a sudden he want to repent because he knew the end was coming. That's the bottom line. I took a stand in 19... I took a stand. I came to realize that we was being tricked in 1973 Savior's Day. The theology of time. Next question. What year were you born, uh, Mr. Muhammad? What year I was born? Yes. What? Yes, what year were you born? What I got to do with me? You, you ain't called me as when I was born. You called me to talk about 25. No, but that, 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 that's the no, because you said 1973. So I wanted to give people like how old you were and stuff like that. That's all. Na 1973. I came 1973. Mm -hmm. I came. My birthday is June 18th, 1943. 1943. I'm 78, bro. What I'm 78, y'all. I was 40 when I realized. I was still doing my thing in the street of Philadelphia. For them to know since Fred worded me to death, I was damn near 40 in 73 theology of time. I was in North Philly doing my thing, doing what I had to do to survive, and I had already been branching out doing my whole own thing. I knew the change was coming. I knew that the old man was sick, and all the young girls, he was probably going to run with the Brown Carters was killing him. So I was damn near 40 in 73 theology of time of save this day. I was I, I was like a few months away because I born in June. The same year as in February. Did, did you did your conversation people got in there? Yes. What year did you join the Nation of Islam? God damn, you killed me, bro. You asking too much. Now. That, 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 that wasn't that, that wasn't an agreement. Now that wasn't an agreement. Stick with the agreement that we made. Well, I, I'm just speaking. So stick with the agreement. Twenty five. Stick with the agreement. Now you want more? You know what you got to do. Stick with the agreement. I, I, I gave you. Something that I shouldn't have given you because that wasn't part of the agreement that you and I made personally. And we're going to stay on the agreement. What else concerning 25 million birds? We're going to stay on the agreement that you and I made personally. Hmm. How many conversations w would you say you've had with William Bradley? Did, did, did y'all talk on the phone? A lot, a lot, did, a lot. Because people, I had a lot with him. Okay. I, gotcha. I knew the brother. I had a lot in the mosque, okay. a lot in the gym, a, a, a lot at the fight. How much time did y'all spend in the boxing gym together? Because wasn't wasn't he working with Rakim the rapper? Listen, bro. If that's what you believe, I heard the same thing. I never questioned asking about what with Rakim. No, in, in terms I of mean, sponsoring fighters. Listen, I know he worked with a lot of fighters, mm -hmm. and I knew that him and his wife convinced the mayor to name the street after Don King in New York, New Jersey, that was, I want to say that was December 2009. Uh, you can put it up for the right date. Mm -hmm. That's the day that Steve Cunningham fought Cassidy Dude fighter Krobalist in New York, New Jersey. That's the day of the press conference that Mustafa and his wife, good sister, Challen, Shelly, Mustafa, Bradley, that's the day of her, and the mayor, all of them named the street after Don King in Newark. Just pulled the date of the probability of Steve Cunningham first fight in Newark, New Jersey. Right. I think it was, I think it was December of 2009. Or De no, December 2008, I believe, or 2009. Right. I just can't remember. Right. But that's the date. That's the date that him and Don King became real close. Did you ever have any conversations with Leon? One of the other team members? With who? Leon. He, he was one of the other guys, uh, one of the five men that went to the Autobahn ballroom. Bro, that wasn't our agreement, bro. You want to no, go there, you he, know that. No, I know I'm all, bro. We're going to stick to me and your agreement. No, but I'm saying that's the team. That's no, Miles 25. No, 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 no. We're not doing that, bro. Thomas We're Hare? not doing that. We're not doing that. Now, okay. you can make me go there. Okay. You can make me go there. You can you make me go to all, all, all five or all seven of them. Two that you don't know about. You can make me want to go there. It's up to you. Thomas Hare. Bruh. You, bruh. We, we will stick to the green. If you're not me person. I'm if just, you want to go there, you know how to make me go there. I know them all. Okay. That's up to you. How many boxing matches did you and William Bradley go to? Uh, bruh. 
That when you deal, you deal with that, about twenty thousand. Yeah, that's 000. what I'm saying. That's what. So is, I'm building. We ain't doing that, bro. I'm building the we relationship. We doing that. That, that had nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. Our gotcha. agreement was about nineteen sixty five. What we believe, what we believe, what we believe about logic. That okay. one had nothing to do with okay. no box nothing. Okay, got you. And if 19- you want to go there, it's up to you. We can go there. I got plenty of time. When you come there, it's up to you. Because if you give your word, your word is good with me. You want to go to all seven of these guys too that you don't know about? That's up to you. And just give your word. And I, I don't have time right now because I got to do the show. And ninth and uh and uh okay, bro. Okay. Did they okay? Did William Bradley in 1965 fly to Chicago after the murder of Malcolm X? <laughs> that wasn't agreement. The agreement was. The agreement was, did he do it or did he do it? We, we said, no, but no, that wasn't part of our agreement. But you keep bringing up stuff that wasn't part of the agreement. Yeah, but this part of the oh, story? No, the, the, the story has nothing to do with what me and you agreed on. Come on, Fred. Be fair with me now, bro. I am being fair. I'm just asking questions. That and, wasn't and, part and, and of the story. Can, and you can choose to uh, just say no comment if I ask you a question. Just say no comment. No comment. Okay, no comment thanks, on thanks. nothing. Nothing that Fred got to say other than what I told you. <laughs> That's real part of it. Did he own a Cadillac? William no Bradley. comment. Okay. Okay. We ain't a lot of stuff, dude. Say it again. Go ahead. I'm listening, bro. No, I, I'm just saying. I mean, I. I See, think. one thing you called and tell my partner I didn't do this that. You should have told my partner you was saying no question that wasn't a, a part of. I was saying. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking the questions based off my research around that time. That's all. And uh, yeah, you, you can't ask questions. And, and first of all, you know I know. You already done did your homework on me. You know I know. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted these questions answered and you wanted these sister names and phone numbers or whatever, whatever it is, you should have put this in part of your and our package. You should have said this last week, bro. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's fine. I'm good. No, you ain't good because if you were good, you wouldn't ask me about these sisters. If you, no, and, and what is, no, no, I know who they are. Mean, I know who they good. are. I know no, who... no, 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 no. You listen, your people listen. You wasn't good. If you was good, you wouldn't ask the question who these sisters that still left. You wouldn't ask. Right. Other than the ones you know, you wouldn't ask right. if you didn't want to know. Right. Don't go about the history. Friends. I'm from the corner like you. Yeah. I'm just a little older. I'm from the same corner. Yeah, I don't know if we're from the same corner, but <laughs> no, we're from the same corner. I'm just, I'm just thirty years before you. Yeah, okay, I'm with that. Forty, and I'm smarter 40. than you. You're born yeah. in seventy-seven. No, no, you're I'm smarter. smarter than you, you're smarter. I know more than you know. Absolutely, uh, and, and that's why, and that's why I'm interviewing you. I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I'll never be smarter than the person I'm interviewing. You know what I mean? <laughs> First of all, all the ones that you had concerning this topic, nobody really knows. The whole story, like me and Sister Belinda. The rest of them, it's thinking, but they wasn't there. I never been there. Never been to the house. I never been to Phoenix. I never been to another piece of property that they had that never been talked about. That the, that, that the messenger had at that time. So everybody know about Phoenix. They didn't know about the other property that, that he had somewhere else. They just knew about, about Phoenix because they wasn't. Mm. About the home in Mexico, is that what you're talking about? Oh no, bro. Okay. The home in Mexico. This is bro, believe in that. Yo, 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 think I'm crazy. He had a home that no one knew about in the backwoods of Georgia, thirty miles from from where he grew up at in Sandersville. Jeremiah person went down there and got it. Minister Jeremiah, the late Minister Jeremiah Shahi, Muslim Shabbat. And, and, and that's part of the reasons why he met with the KKK. He's very smart. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. 1962. Can you speak upon that meeting in 1962? Well, first of all, Malcolm was scared, but Jeremiah was because Jeremiah had his crew with him. He had the, the crew before me, the captain before me with him, and they were dangerous. You look up the story of, of Sam Christian, 
my brother Mayock. He the one that went got all them gangsters that weren't giving no money to the number two poor chair in Chicago. He led and went and got it. See, first of all, a lot of them guys came before me in the ranks. As I said before, I don't know the history, but I knew that Mike Tyson's father-in-law, he taught me the real Islam. The man, Shantanin Ali, and I love the man, Shantanin Ali. He was, he was the captain then. Before he went in, he was the captain after Sam Christian went in. Sam Christian had, had that homicide not too far from your block. Where was that record shit shop at in Harlem? One of the record shop down the, down the block from on your 40, block grade? On 41st? Yeah, one of the record shop there? Yeah, on 41st, on 42nd, right by the Linux Lounge and all that area, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's where Captain, Captain Sam Christian, who led shot the police in there, that's how he wound up doing 20-something years in all bomb prison of state New York. That's when Champion Ali became the captain. And then he went in, Captain George, Captain Donnie Day became the captain. I became the business captain, personally, for Minister, for Minister Jeremiah Shabbat. I became his personally business, business captain. Mm. So that's how I knew more. But I was doing my thing in the street back from Chicago, doing this and doing that. That's how I knew, because I was in the mix with all the brothers out of Newark, Baha Muhammad. Baha was the master maker for Eddie Mustafa Muhammad when he was world champion. Mm. And Baha close. That's a lot of guys that was more close to the brother we talking about, Brother Mustafa, than I was because they grew up under him in Newark on Chancellor Avenue. I just knew the boxing side and the business side. But the prison side, you got to get it with them brothers and all them brothers in their 70s. And if I give them the blessing, they'll come see your coach. Okay. But 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 no one is gonna do it unless I bless them. Yeah, and uh that's where the stake and take was, right? No, they had more than one stake and take. Now. Yeah, I know that, but mm -hmm. but I remember I I remember something being on that corner somewhere down there. Um, down where? In New York? Yeah, in New York. I I know there was one like on 118th, 17th, somewhere in there. And then there was there was one by the mosque down there on 116th. On 116th Street. Yeah. And it's, 116. And, 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 and it was it was um up your course yeah. towards your way. Yeah. Up by you, there was a a stake and take yeah. and an Akbar this place up by your block. Right. Right. Exactly. 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 On the other side of the Lenin's Lounge. Yeah, on the, I know exactly. That that's what I'm speaking of. I, I remember it. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, one was there. Yes, yeah. one was there. Yeah. So Yusuf Shaw was in charge of all that. Gotcha. But Yusuf Shaw, he had he talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had mistress over age and underage. Yusuf Shaw wasn't no fucking better. Mm. See y'all, they could be talking, but I know this shit here. Yeah. I know this stuff, man. So I'm saying to you, brother, it's a shame how that went down, and it's a shame. But that one sister, she, bruh, if she told you her story, I'm proud of her. Because she fought, she fought all them brothers. Uh, they wouldn't let her in. She would spit on them and kick them on, on the leg. She said, listen, this man is going to take care of my children. She said, don't my crew won't come out of New York. Dog had to be ready to go to war with, with the guns. This sister was fighting. I love her today. She's a good sister, man. And Nikki, <sighs> Nikki, Nikki, Frank Matthews, all of them had her back. They said, if them Negroes want a problem, because let me tell you this. And listen to me closely. Had that not been from Jeremiah, Bummy was going to kill all of them. Mm. Bummy was going to kill them all, bro. I ain't saying no movie shit. Bummy was going to kill them all. Jeremiah got the word, and we got the bumping in 19, in, in the early 60s, we got the bumping. When Malcolm went to see bumping, Malcolm bumping said, I kill them all, including Elijah. We'll find a way to get to him, we know he'll protect you. He said, but that little fat, that little fat drunk out of Detroit, Yusuf Shaw, he never called him Yusuf Shaw. <laughs> Bumpy called him Joseph, Joseph the, the, Joseph the, the drunk. <laughs> See, 
They didn't play with Bumpy. They were scared of Bumpy. They knew that Malcolm was saving because he didn't want no bloodshed between the brothers. That's one part in the movie that was true. Malcolm didn't want no good. So he told Jeremiah, see, today, I believe Malcolm would have been here if Allah hadn't called him for other reasons. And Malcolm would have came to Philadelphia because 25 feared number 12. They didn't want to go to war with us because they know you go to war with us, your children might go, your mother might go, everybody might go. See what I'm saying? We didn't play them games. 12 took everybody. We didn't leave nobody but a white man to question. We didn't leave nobody to come back 20 years later. So, as I told you before, the only reason is Jack King Cook and Jerry Bush is that bum Kareem still here. Mm. See what I'm saying? But, but a lot of business was being conducted out of that steak and tape. Bumper used to come there all the time. Brother just said, Malcolm said he don't have to pay for nothing. That's the God's problem. That's Bumper. Malcolm had respect for him. That's why he told Malcolm the first one on the list would have been Joseph the Drunk. He called, used to show Joseph the Drunk. Bro, I got some sisters on your block. There's a sisters on your block. You remember a restaurant when you was a kid right across the street of your block? Called Serena's? I, I don't recall, no. How about A Dells on Fifth Avenue? It was another soul food junk called A Dells uh, on yeah. Fifth Avenue. Yeah, 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 I've heard of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A Dell used to show between the mama and the daughter, and the daughter went about 16, 17 at that time. So he kept everybody talking about Elijah. You got to talk about the guys around Elijah that had Elijah have it. Bro, I can tell you some stuff that you don't really know, bro. But it was a shame the way it went down. So, see, first of all, the New World Order, they wanted to come get myself and all them other guys. Leon, all them other guys. But them guys, they knew them guys were packing, man. And it was, a, it was another guy that was there that was from your block that nobody never talked about. Was the, was the one with the bomb with the original bomb, cocktail bomb, from your block. If I call your family name, you wouldn't know. You weren't born then. You got to ask them your old uncle, the old uncle friend that's still around. So that's the way it was, man. You know, that's the way it was. You sign it, you got it. Mm. James and James signed it. He got it the same way. And you should shut up, die like a dog in March of 1973. Serving pork chops and drinking liquor again with Don James. Mm. That's the way it went there. Mm. Next question. So you actually had you actually met Bumpy Johnson and 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 and, and... Bruh. I'm... I knew all the gangsters in New okay, York. Okay. Frank Nephew, yep. Nicky Bond, Lucas, I knew them all. Okay, great. Okay, great. I was in the streets at that time. I, I was in the streets, y'all, but I was doing something different than what they was doing. But I was in the streets. The captain was in the street <laughs> doing my thing. Right. Well, Fred, you drag a lot out of me today. But, you, but, but that's what I'm saying to you, bro. If you understand this, man, and a lot of that stuff that the brothers, see a lot of them brothers. Let me say this for you on the house. A lot of them brothers, Raymond Sharif, and all of them, and a lot of the after them, that being women, I get on to read for the men. But let me say this truly, and I want the women to know that listen to you. When you, when you a woman, covering up the shit that your father do, a husband do to your daughter, to one of your nieces, that shit ain't cool, Fred. A lot of the after knew what their father was doing. So, my question, and I know and I know you've heard rumors. You tell me the rumors you heard about them two, and I'll tell you if it's two or not. About Sharif? No, no, about Lord and Ethel. Listen to what I just said. Uh-huh. Listen to me closely, brother, please. And I want you to respect the women 
on barbershop conversation prayer to listen. If you cover up being two sisters, two women, know the shit that your father is doing to other women and other sisters, you as women covered up. If you got a gender, or you know something that's happened to y'all that we don't know about. Think about what I just said now. Mm. Women, what have you heard? If you, what have you led heard in the streets of the barbershop? You don't hear anything about the shots and balls. That's why you didn't just sit by the conversation. <laughs> From a- so, so what have you heard about Lottie and Esther? Lottie and Esther, let's say Lottie and Esther. And what have you heard? And I'll tell you the truth of that. I just heard that they were sleeping with the people that were within the nation. Lottie and Ethel, right? Yeah. She just died what have you heard about about three, five years ago. Lottie. I know you heard something other than that. Go ahead and say it. I'll bear with you. If it's true, I'll bear with you. No, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. You know what, bro? It was a ledge. Yes. Now, I don't know, but I do know. And that's you to really want to know what I know. Mm-hmm. That Lesson Ali was touched by a family member. That's what I was told. That's what I've heard. And that's what I heard Lottie say. Lottie was more smart than Esther. She hated her father. Lottie was, Lottie was educated. Esther was a damn fool. Esther was there for the ride. Mm-hmm. Lottie was educated. Lottie was very smart. She hated her father. Because if you read her book, and a genuine Lottie was about a lot of women's rights and the women. She was hard on guys that that she heard, brothers that came in that have touched their daughters and shit. Lottie had blocked them from, from getting their ex. Lottie was very smart. I respect Lottie more than I respect Esther because Lottie was about women being protected and women being equal. Mm. Listen, when you came to Lottie House. Ain't no men at first, all the women at first. Lottie didn't play that. Oh, we ain't taking no background. That's what her and them father never got along with. Because you know the sisters are sick. When you come to Ethel's house, it was different. You come to Lottie, everybody, Lottie's house, everybody was equal. And she taught her daughter, you ain't better than no man, you ain't no man better than you. That's what I learned about such a lot. But the rest of them, they was crazy. Mm-hmm. Ethel was a nut. See, listen. And Raymond, Raymond Reed, Raymond Reed knew who she was for. He knew all the brothers, and a couple of brothers stood around. Matter of fact, I saw a brother at AM last show. We sat out and talked about the old days. But you, you couldn't believe what was going on in that inner circle, bro. Now that you brought it up, bro. Sometimes it memorized me and to be around all that dirt at that time. But, bro, at that time, I wasn't official. I was with the man that was the man, Minister Jeremiah Shahi, Muslim Shabazz, and all them good brothers, Captain Sam and all of them, Lonnie Dawson, all of them. Big Al mean Jabal. And notice, speaking of Jabal, you remember asking me about that Dubai case? Yes. Matter of fact, his daughter worked at the hotel where him and them stay at all the time. Mm. It's your bar's daughter, the main brother, to, known as Robert Mim, just returned to a lot in Minnesota. He the one protected Bernard Hopkins, but when he was having problems with, with Butch Lewis and all them, Don King and all them, before he passed, he didn't want to check the heat off of, off of, off of, off of Bernard and Don wanted, wanted to send, send his crew. Bernard, I can tell you about that. Brother, you'd be surprised what went wrong in that inner circle in Chicago. Mm-hmm. See, I don't know what you and Khalil talked about that you went to the Belinda. Yeah. But that's my girl. Yes. She, she can tell you a lot more. And, and, and I mean, I mean, you know, I'm saying what she said about what some could be too, because she hated Sherry. She hated Shirley. Imam Wabi Muhammad's first wife. 
Everybody hated her because she didn't take no mess. She was like Sonya, Ali for a bike. She didn't take no mess from you, nobody. Today, right now, me and you talking, she's doing his estate. So y'all going to take care of me as long as I'm alive. Y'all, it's crazy for real, man. Mm. You didn't know that? No. Khadija, out of all of them, Khadija is the only one that don't say, say too much. That's the, that's the, that's the minister wife. She's a good sister. His daughter, Bessie Jean, all of them, they're good sisters. You know? But but we play a lot. That is good. But brother, if you only knew, friend, the shit that went down, man, with them younger sisters, the other sisters in the lot was crazy. Man. It is crazy. And as we talked about in that man, I feel bad how they use Sparacon. They use Sparacon. Because when you got a guy, and, and I know there were guys on your block when you were growing up, a lot of intelligent guys, a lot of guys were good speakers, and a lot of brothers would want them to do the talking. And they used this name, you see Sean all of them used him. When Farrakhan realized how used you see Sean was using him for James Shabazz and all of them prior to 1917 and James Shabazz got in the state. In the New World Order, Yusuf Shaw, you man, Yusuf Shaw was dangerous, bro. Mm. You, 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 he was very dangerous and very conniving, but he went out like the dog he was, serving pork chop for Don James with us. <laughs> Me and Timmy was, ask hey, Timmy what's for? I'm gonna give you Timmy and ask Timmy. Timmy, that's my attention. We all was there, he didn't take my word, I got proof. And then, then I gotta read the line, no way. That's not a take. His son and daughter that's alive today. His son, he lived at Master Youth Show in Mount Vernon. Now, let me tell you something. Now, think about this now. Think about this. William Bradley, to my knowledge, I wasn't there that day, but I was told that he was there. When Imam Wafdi Muhammad named the Master after his father's captain, you didn't name a master after your own father. He named a master as one of your father's guys and one of your father's enemies. Think about what I just said to you. Malik El Shabazz is a master that Posse got on 116th Street. Right. And you and you the show son, you the show junior, got the master in my firm name after you the boss. Now, now you know what your father was doing with them girls and teaching church was wrong. So he named them, so he was smart. He named the master after your law captain. And, and, and have your most trusted friends and then your most trusted enemy. Read between the lines. You, you probably got to read between the lines. So they think you lied to them with you, them young girls. You got to check all the people around you, them young girls, including your rat friend, John Ali, that young girl. I don't know the age of them, but I know they were a lot younger than John Ali because I'm down there eating and he older than me. Talk to me, Fred. You wanted to be 25 in Chicago history than young girls and William and William Bradley talk to me, brother. Don't get that young now. No, no, Claire Muhammad. What and what, oh, when she Paul Sister Claire. I love Sister Claire. Me a lot rest her. Sister Claire Muhammad. What you want to know, brother? Her response to all this. And is it true that Elijah Muhammad uh touched his granddaughter? And Claire Muhammad found out. Which granddaughter? I got, I got, you got ten of them. Oh, I don't know which. I don't know which one. God, dog. By one of the children, by one of the boys, or one of the girls. You only had two girls. Girls. It was. Don't let girl. had two girls by Clay. Yeah. See, there's another daughter that nobody knew about that was born in Sandersville, Georgia, before he got to Detroit and married Clay. Mm. Mm. She. Y'all searching, but y'all got to search with me. Did you search from Sandersville, Georgia, all the way to Chicago until he died? No, I didn't. See, see, Fred, I'm going to teach you something, bro. Yeah. You're your own man. You do what you want to do. Yeah. But, but if you want to do a story on a guy, you got to start from where it all started, bro. Right. Don't think Emmanuel was him and Claire's first child. 
You think he didn't, he didn't get no, I'm just, I'm just playing. He didn't get, he didn't, he didn't get no pussy uh, 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 until he got to the Detroit by Claire. Mm. Claire, would you think Claire was his first? Come on, bro, do your homework. And from what I was told by reliable source, yes. Mm. That's what I was told. What was and somebody said it was Ezra's daughter. Somebody said it was Junior's daughter. I don't really know because at that time, but the source that told me will tell you right in front, right in front of the children right now mm. and grandchildren, and right in front of Lewis. Mm. So I don't really know, but from my understanding and what I was told by the sister of the of the sister that was alleged that it is true. That's what I was told. If you know I'm a street nigga, you don't believe what you hear, you believe what you see. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm taking their word because they are good Muslims today and they're following the run and they're raising their children to, fuck, to do the what is right and the truth. So that's why I believe it other than seeing it other than the street code. How many kids do you think Elijah had? Or Noah. More, more, more than what they say he had. If you could guesstimate 35, 40, because we got 20, we got 25 on record. So I wanna I wanna say at least 32, 33. Mm. See, you gotta remember. When he was sick in Phoenix, he had mistress. Come on, man. When he was in Phoenix, he had mistress. He had mistress. So we don't really know, but I'm saying as a fact, I'm saying 32, 33. Yeah. See, you, you got to remember, bro, a lot of them brothers, that you had not, he had a lot of them daughter, man. The man was crazy, man. In his old age, young, and the man was crazy, man. I loved him because he cleaned me up. But right is right, Fred. He served the purpose at his time, but he man, why did he man change me to change, change everything? Sat down, came to disband the FOI, and the man came to everybody for himself. Ain't no more free money. Yes, the lot had, he, he made his sister and brother go get a job. You see, man, when Jerry began the salary, you see, when prior 1975, he was driving cabs. He, man, wasn't giving them nothing, man. Y'all had to go, everybody had to go to work. Mm. You see, a lot of them sisters had to go get jobs, sisters that were screwing them, brothers, brothers, getting that free money from the lodge and taking cabs. A lot of them brothers were passing off their daughters. But a lot of shit you don't know, bro. Mm. A lot of them brothers them top lieutenants out there in Chicago, they were passing their thought off to the brother in high echelon, man. They, they, kept, they were trying to stay in favor. Chicago was rat infested. In the circle, I know John Ali told you the shit, some of the shit that was going on. Probably told you shit that was going on that he wasn't involved in. Trust me, bro, that's the way it was. And Claire Muhammad, uh, you, do, do you know She's of... a good sister, man. Yes. Go ahead. No, uh... What were your interactions with her? And can you speak upon her reactions that you know of as it pertains to um, one, Malcolm X death and two, or excuse me, Malcolm X murder and two, Elijah Muhammad's infidelities and lying bro, and lying about being messenger of God? Let me say this, brother. I met the sister quite a few times ago. The sister was very oh, we can't humble. hear you. You got to speak up again. Sorry. Go ahead. The sister was very humble. Good Muslim sister, brother. But from my understanding, my knowing, she wasn't clean. She was a quiet man of sister. A lot of times, as of the day, a lot of women know stuff that their husband's doing. They just don't speak on it. They're loyal, but they speak on it to them. They just don't publicly speak on it. She wasn't the woman even today with all the modern technology, she wouldn't go online. She wouldn't speak on it because she wasn't that kind of sister. Mm -hmm. Like these ball players, wife and do today, come online and go on social media. Even today, she wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. 
she was not that kind of figure. She was a good Muslim. She knew what he was doing. She wasn't pleased with what he was doing. She wasn't pleased with a lot of other she was doing. Mm. But she was a good Muslim sister. To my mind, a few times in the right dish, and, and, and all the brothers and you know, sisters that I know was guests for dinner at their house. And she wasn't pleased. She loved the Malcolm. She thought of Malcolm as her son. She loved the Malcolm. From what I understand and what I was told by brothers, by my own family members that was there that day in Chicago. He was, he, he, my, my, I got a personal first cousin that's living today and tell you himself, he was in Chicago that day. If you watch the pictures and point them all out and call me, I'll tell you which one he is. That, that was there on security that day when John Ali was late in New York, coming come from Chicago when he missed the flight. Mm. So it is what it is, bro. But the preference of Sister Claire, to my knowledge, to my understanding, to my knowing, she was a good sister, wasn't clean. When she heard what went down with the granddaughter, it was very, it was ugly, but God is the best, no one's best of planet. She been gone since 1972, bro. So it is what it is, bro. But she wasn't pleased. She was a good sister. She loved her family, loved her children. And she loved the novel that broke up to my knowledge, to my, to, to my two family members, that first cousin that was there, testified, and I believe my family, that her heart was broken that day in 1965 on the 7th February 21st at the Autobahn Road in Harlem. She was broken more than anybody else. See, you told me before that you watched the press conference yes. that John Ali was late for. You told me this, <laughs> that you felt you were even born that you felt then that he was that he was guilty of sin. Right. Did you think he did you think he was guilty of sin? Yes. You smart, and you weren't even born, and you weren't you weren't even in, in your father nothing yet. <laughs> I'm saying to you, bro, Fred, the man was guilty of sin. Mm. That's what I believe. That's what I know. Mm. See, first of all, man, when all this came down that day, see, as I said before, Jeremiah Shabazz, the only one that take orders out of Chicago. Chicago was killing Jeremiah. Farrakhan said he tried to kill. We, we tried to kill Farrakhan. That's how Farrakhan got to Chicago. <laughs> he called him ma'am. See, when we went in, when, see, see, you got to know the whole story. Farrakhan took over seven. You know that, right? Seven. Yeah. And then he went to. Uh, Hold up. Yes. We stand with 65. We'll go upstairs in a minute. Farrakhan took over six to, took over seven in six to five. Mm -hmm. Farrakhan became a rival of Yusuf Shaw. But the least little thing going on, Yusuf Shaw would call Chicago to try and say he was a rat for the honor of Elijah Muhammad, like John Ali was with the Jack of Uber. But when Farrakhan threatened to set down Yusuf Shaw, couldn't nobody set Yusuf Shaw down. But Elijah Muhammad, that's why he condoned all the dirt that Elijah Muhammad was doing and died like the dog he did with serving coach out with Don King and all Don King crew. See, when Farrakhan took over, a lot of things was going on in New York. So prior to 1975, 76, in Philadelphia, Farrakhan came down with the minister gate, the minister at the city center, that's when he man closed everything down. Said no more FI, no more MDGs. And all the sisters and brothers got to take care of themselves, go get jobs. He said, we, we, we make the world of 1976. And he signed us to New York. And that's when that Jeremiah and that, all that stuff went down to New York. Mm -hmm. And that's when later on, Farrakhan went to Farrakhan. Jeremiah threatened Farrakhan. And Farrakhan called the man. And the man said, Jeremiah is a serious man. So the man brought us to Chicago. And gave Farrakhan was scared to death because he knew our history. <laughs> and gave Farrakhan a little moss on the west side. Farrakhan started drinking again. And Fair, to my knowledge, I ain't never seen him take no drink, but that, that's what Imam said. And went to, to the island where his mother was born at. For two years, we didn't see Farrakhan. He came back in 1978 and told Imam. I'm right there. Told him, man, walk me, Muhammad. We'll lobby people. 
grand paradise that he that, that he was leading him and restarting the nation. That was 1938. Mm. But Fair Khan went to Chicago out of fear, not because he wanted to go to Chicago, but we had that pressure on him. Mm. Now I'm telling you this, because the order came down from Minister Jeremiah and, and the Amen and the Fair Khan, and I love the minister the deacon and his children and grandchildren. But the truth is the truth. You wanted it? He was part of the time next to you. You wanted it? You were me death for six days, y'all. But it wasn't me to death. But that's how he got to Chicago. He's lucky he was going to get it. But he played the part. Now, Fred put it out there. If he hadn't went to New York that day to teach, he'd have got it too. Because they, they know he talked a lot and, and might say the wrong thing. That's why he was ordered to go to New York. Since you asked about New York, while he teaching that day, he was ordered to go to New York. What's next, Fred? Wow. Wow, that says a lot. <laughs> see what I'm telling you? See, see, see these guys tell you stories. They don't hear they talking about. Let me tell you something. He was so scared of us, man. He was so scared of when the order came down. Because that then, I always liked him, him, but I always thought he talked too damn much. But I, now I see he is what he is, man. But if the order would have came, then when the order came down, he had to go, bro. Mm. Had the Imam not called Jeremiah, he, he'd have been out of here. Mm. He was going, bro. Because you talking about what Philadelphia, Fred Khan used to call us alligator shoe token gangsters. Mm. Now I would call us alligator shoe gangsters. Read this book, he called Philadelphia gangsters. He know that we didn't play. Man, we were saying stuff, man. But, but we understood him. We're used to showing all of them didn't understand him. We understood him. Mm. We understood him. They didn't understand him. See, getting back, he didn't know, man, there was a place Now you, now you might remember, where was that fish store at, Fred? And I, I can tell you the story I want to tell you. The fish store, was it going towards Adam Clayton or you, it, was, it was going the other way, it, it, it uh, was, towards 5th Avenue? It was, on a hundred, it was on 145th Street. Right, 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 yeah. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you go to the, and you got to the bridge. Going, going to, to the, the bridge. Bronx. Going to the bridge to the Bronx, the Yankee Stadium. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yeah. Now listen. One night we get a call, right? Used to show up there getting fish. That's where, that's where, that's where, that's where you get all the fish that, that the white is at. Used to show comes down, right? Cross the bridge. He stops at the park. What's the park right here? By Esmeralda Garden, yeah, where they play ball and stuff? Yeah, Hum 45th Street. Yeah, Hum 45th Street. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Used to show in the park, right? Get the road job. It's crazy. Mm. This is crazy. So Bumpy, Bumpy guys say tell they go over to see Bumpy said we can get him now. Bumpy said no, because Malcolm said he don't want no bloodshed. Mm. So later on, one of one of Bumpy's lieutenants wants to get him. Now we coming out of the building. At 142nd and Leonard, mm. Bethune, Bethune Cookman Building, mm -hmm. the apartment building right there, 142nd and Leonard, yep. facing the ball field. The end of the ball field is at the bridge, 145th Street. Yep. Yep. You see Shaw cross the street, if you remember, cross the street. Uh, there's no God. It's the first building, yeah. Mm -hmm. The brick building, across the street, you had the bar, the, 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 the deli, the Arab deli. At the chicken shack right there on the corner. Mm -hmm. Yusuf Shaw used to be in that bar, so he come out one night. This is years later. One of Bumpy's guys that you remember, and, 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 you know, he done came into the community, and he told Yusuf Shaw the story. Me, a couple guys that's left that with Butch, Butch is gone. Yusuf Shaw was so scared. He said, Listen, I shouldn't make you run to Chicago. Let your let your man hear them. Made prayer con one in Chicago, man. I was rolling, and and, and and God rest his soul. We go down there, 
and, 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 and I know the scary ass. You remember the congressman, the senator from Brooklyn name? What was his last name? Name Owens. What was his first name? Who was that? The congressman from Brooklyn. The name, his last name was Owen. What was his first name? I'll Google it. He again. came. He, he came after Ringo. He was doing Ringo's time, but he represented Brooklyn. And his son and his son played on on the Crosby. His son played on the Crosby. What was his name, Fred? Uh, Fred. Major Owens. Major Owens. Major Owens. Mm -hmm. See, Major, because Major come to us, man. He said we need a pair. We need pair in New York. So. Jeremiah already in New York because we were dropping, we were, it, it was alleged that we were dropping bodies, all them drug dealers that weren't giving us, us none of that money. That was in the paper, that was the mayor and all them things. Cotton, all them, Cotton, all them, was, they were scared of Jeremiah, bro. They, they, they could pacify Farrakhan. See what I'm saying? Farrakhan didn't get to Chicago because he wanted to get there because we ran his ass to Chicago. <laughs> it wasn't that, man, they didn't play with us so. What's the next question? But to answer your question, 65 came out of Newark, and, and the world know that he did it. And brother, you couldn't find a sweeter woman than Sister Claire. Uh, yeah, it, that, that, that's what I hear a lot too from the stories that Sister Claire Muhammad was was a was a kind woman, was a kind spirit, kind soul. Brother, she was so kind. The shit she put up with from her daughters and sons. The shit that no mother want their daughter to do it. Brother Elijah Jr. talking that shit, he had more mission than his damn father. Mm. Mm. See, Akbar and Walt were the smartest ones. Nathaniel was a nut. He did this thing out in Kansas City. Mm. Nate did this thing out in Kansas City. But let me tell you something, bro. This is, bro. The girls, man. That's the Ether. Ether was a nut. You need to ask Belinda more about Ether. Because see, all them, see, she grew up in this house because Raymond Board, who just died last year, you know, I know she told you her father her just father, died last year. Her father, her mom is still alive, yes. No, her father died last year. Yeah. I think Belinda's mom still alive. Yeah, her mom is still but alive. But her father died yes. last year. Captain Raymond died last year. Right. Now, she grew up in that house. The bakery that he ran, that was Elijah's bakery. See, Elijah had a lot of young girls <laughs> in the bakery because he'd get that young pussy. I ain't gonna take my word out. Ask Melinda, she was right there. Mm. See, but a lot of shit y'all don't know, bro. A lot of shit I believe. And he was a good guy. He taught the truth. He cleaned us up. But, bro, you can't clean up somebody and, and do and dirt yourself. See, but that's why a lot of brothers tricked up today. That's why a lot of brothers are glad when the Imam walked in Muhammad King. And, and took us out of the bro. We were locked down like shackles. A lot of them brothers couldn't do nothing. The brother could say something to your wife back then. Say, your wife got to go to Chicago, brother. Mm -hmm. The brother did not question, why my wife going to Chicago to, to see the Lamb of God? Some of us called him the messenger, last messenger, and some of us called him the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Bro, if a joker walk into you and said your wife has got to go to Chicago, what you going to tell him right now, Fred? Um, what you going to tell him that that, that pair of say he needed to see his sister in Chicago? What you going to tell his nigga today? Oh, he ain't going. She ain't going. Already. You see what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. See, that's how he had a trick, bro. Especially the brothers that went to trust. See, most of the brothers, most of the brothers in Philly, Came out of that gang war situation. We care about those structures, those damn we, we just been part of what was going on at that time. Bro, not one time. I told you, my wife used to curse Raymond and Reef a lot of them out all the time. They bought up and come to save the day. Mm. But she didn't play them games. She's just up in the hood. The fuck? She's the whole time. She's the effort. She's the first effort. She liked a lot of it. Bitch, I bleed every, you bleed every month like I do. So why, why you can get a fur coat? I can't. She said, because I'm the messenger's daughter. She said, that nigga going no mess. That nigga was fucking young girl. Well, my boy, Tiny was a motherfucker, boy. She was a motherfucker. Lottie was, she, you said? <laughs> no, no, she tell you after that. 
Okay. Lottie was more humble like a mother. Mm-hmm. She had her way, but Ethel was a motherfucker, man. Really? None of the sisters liked the Ethel. Mm-hmm. Ethel thought she was better than these. So mm-hmm. once my wife started talking slick and back, her and her girlfriends that was in the nation out of Philly, talking back to Ethel in front of everybody, they just said, y'all sisters better wake up. This old tired bitch bleed every month like we do. So what makes her any better than her? She get cramps like all us women do. So what makes her any better than her? So a lot of stuff started waking up. A lot of stuff got put out because <laughs> they said, my wife, they said, Tanya was crazy. You can't hear Tanya Chicago. Tanya said, fuck all y'all. I was sending black gangsters out of Philadelphia and my husband, I got a crew that my husband don't have to send his crew. So I, I wouldn't say that. I let her talk, but she always been her own woman. She tell me I'm a own woman. I married you because I love you and you're a children's father. But if you pay them day, obviously, no crew in my crew be going to war. She hated Ethel. Mm. Ethel was a motherfucker, man. Ethel, Ethel was fucking more than young FOI than you thought she was fucking. Ramis Reeves didn't care because he couldn't do nothing for her. Mm. It's less, it's less that the last two kids of hers ain't ready to reach. That's what it's led to, but I don't know if you heard that or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I did. yeah, I, I, I have, but I, I only speak on what I can, what I know. You yeah. know what I mean? See, if what you heard, I tell you, it's true or not. Mm-hmm. Ethel, Ethel was a hoe, man. Mm. The old hoe. With old ass fur coat. But Mamie Sweet couldn't do nothing. Mamie Sweet was just there. He was a supreme child. Remember, did you know that Raymond couldn't read or write? Mm-hmm. Raymond was illiterate. Wait till he was driving a cab. Oh, after being a supreme captain all them years, and you didn't, you couldn't do, you, you didn't have, have no connection to get nothing else. You had to drive a cab for a living till you died. Think about that. Come on, wake up. You ain't nothing slow about you. You just want to get it from me. Right. Come on, brother. Hmm. See what I'm saying to you, brother? This is real, man. Wow. See what I'm saying, bro? Next question, bro. <laughs> I got to start Come my on, show, man. man. Damn. No, because you know I... Cause you know I need some help, man. I'm fucked up. You know I need you. Come on, now. You better give me why you got me. You get all the dirt on the lines and stuff. Why you can't? Why you got me? <laughs> no, you never. You, you, you never spoke of the conversations that that you had with uh, uh Mustafa. Oh, uh, well, you, well, you want that bad though? Yeah, because it because well, because it's the story. Well, we had some conversations, bro. Some good conversations, some bad conversations. The times that I've seen. We talked about some things. I mean, we thank a lot that, that, that we're following the prophet now. I mean, some good things and bad things. It is what it is, brother. Good brother, I love him. He loved me. He loved all the brothers. The lady I met, Muhammad, love Ali and all the brothers. Frank Nine, Osman Sharif. But the things that we said, brother, you know, and I answered myself, he said, brother, whatever I did in 65, may God forgive me. That's what he said to me. So we, we already know. So, did that answer your question? Uh, it answered it in in a subjective term. I I just want to know the conversations that you guys had on the streets because you guys worked together on the streets and you also made some deals in boxing. So that that's why. No, we never really made no deals in boxing, but we I was there that day when they him his lovely wife gotcha. took the challenge. Named Don King as way. If there was something needed, he would always send his nephew to me, the late Ahmed, Ahmed Muhammad, who was Carl King's right hand man. Everything that he did in his later years, it came to Ahmed and brothers he know mm-hmm. to me to get it done. Mm-hmm. Because you know, brothers was leery after the circ- circulation of he this and that. And Brother would come to me and, and say the big brother to do this, do that, mm-hmm. and I would get it done. I would go to Don and go to Butch or go to Am and get it done. Right. But the time that he would say something to me, it would be at Juma or whatever, we would get a salam and we would talk. But everything through boxing came through Ahmed Muhammad, through other brothers, through Maraud and all that because. They knew I was the guy I'm close to Carl, mm. and I was close to Henry Adam, Henry Adam Muhammad. I'm going to say Henry Adam King, who was Don, lovely wife, and me a lot of people, please, which is Henry Adam, that's my girl. 
And then there's me and Carl before, and they know that Don respected Jam Ma. And they know that Don know that we, we didn't care how much Ma they had, that the Ma feared Temple 12, because we didn't play no game. So Lewis will tell you today, you play with 12, you got what you want. And in, in early days, you still get what you want if you play with any guys out of 12. Right, right, right. So yes, 65, he prayed for forgiveness. And yes, a lot of things he did in boxing, it came to me and I got it done for him and other brothers that was with him. I got it done, but it came to Ahmed Muhammad and some of the other brothers. And I got it tired. We talked, we talked, we talked. He said, brother, we are grateful that Allah blessed us to be here as long as we have. Right. The things that we have done, we pray for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. A lot of things in boxing, a lot of things in the gym that was done for him and for his gym. I did it to other people. But the word was sunk by him. Mm. Because when you dealing with certain people like Am and the Duba, known good people, when you dealing with certain people and the word they done got what kind of God you is, you couldn't go directly to him. You had to send somebody that was already with them. Right. So in the later years, when he married such a challenge, that he became close to DK. Right. He been close to DK. I asked me did DK come in for his dinner? I didn't see DK. Mm. When he died a couple years ago, I didn't see DK. You know a lot of word is out that they got him on out of here because but he, 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 he was sick prior to what Abdul Rahim. Abdul Rahim is crazy, man. Mm. He's crazy. And but you don't know he looking over his shoulder every day. He, he don't know he might get his head cracked. Mm. See, I don't have a problem with anybody investigating, doing stories on somebody, but you did it the right way. That's why you ain't got no problem. You did it the right way. He did it being slick, running, getting the daughters, getting the daughters all hyped up. Now, Farrakhan came live. See, Farrakhan did it right. He came live on 60 Minutes and said, whatever part I play, See, Farrakhan slicking all the way though. You saw, you, did you see the interview on 60 Minutes? Oh, for with sure. Him and, his him and his daughter, yeah. See, they know that Farrakhan didn't pull the trigger. They know that he didn't give the order, but he played a climax. See, Farrakhan did what he was told to do. See, you gotta remember, Farrakhan didn't have no power that time. No, go ahead, brother. You got, you got one idea. You want to do that over there? You got plenty of them. So, so, you got the code to it? You're, 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 if, you're, if you're in the guest here, the front desk won't give you the code. If you, but you got to be a guest here to get the code. They won't give it to you. So, what I'm saying to you, brother, is that you have to understand the role he played. You what? What do you think? I got what? I got lots of my phone. I'm on the phone, bro. I'm talking on the phone. So what I'm saying to you, bro, is that the role he played, Mustafa couldn't stand him. Mm. Mustafa didn't like him. Because had he did not did what he told, bro, he wouldn't be here today. I'm telling you this. Don't care who like it, or don't like it, what comments you get. Just the way it was back then. Y'all were afraid about it, now you're getting in the bread going to pay for it. He doesn't pay for it. So y'all worried about it, now you got it. He would have got it if he, if, if, if he had taught that Sunday, 1955, at 25. He'd have got it mm. because it was a part of the coercion. See, you didn't know, and I'm telling you, you used to show before. Use the shawl was four, three blocks away that day to make sure it went down. You just like it went down in New York with Big Pauly. Use the shawl was in the area to make sure everything was being carried out. Think about who taught that day. See, you got to remember, Farrakhan was sent to 25 for a reason. And somebody else taught that day in New York. And the system chaplain at that time, Mustafa Majee, he's still around. The system chaplain to Yusuf Shaw was told 
because he was because he was acting sister minister that day, title twenty five. You no, know, title seven. You repair a car title title twenty five that day. So the reason and because all the way up, all the way up until seventy five, eight years later, people were scared of Paracons, huh? They didn't know what he might say, what he would say. Mm-hmm. So when, when the Imam kept the the, the Imam walked in Muhammad, kept the pressure off all of them. Cause they wanted to go get him because he might know what he would say, what he would say. Still today, but he's more smarter today, 50 some years later, than he was then. He was a hot he. He had love for Elijah Muhammad. And he didn't hate Malcolm. He loved the Malcolm, but he loved, he hated what he did to his spiritual leader and his spiritual father. That's what called the conversation. See, Farrakhan used to show create the controversy. Then John Ali picked it up, his snake ass and the rest of it, and James Shabazz. See, it was a coercion. See, you don't know this either. It was coercion. But what I was told and with the part that I seen when I was young, coming through the ranks, coming on up, that those three hated that yeah, Malcolm took over. Malcolm would set all them bums down. Yeah. James Shabazz, Farrakhan, and Yusuf Shaw. That was the coercion out of New York. Farrakhan didn't really say too much because he wanted to be the music at, at number seven. See, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad put Malcolm because he knew they weren't qualified to handle New York. But he put Yusuf Shaw there to be his lackey and watch Malcolm. That's how Yusuf Shaw got there. Yusuf Shaw didn't come to the ring, but Yusuf Shaw be, became a lieutenant and went from a lieutenant straight to captain. He didn't come to the ring because Malcolm chose him. He got him out the trash can on Russell and Brown. And, and some Yusuf Shaw nephews in Detroit to take it. Still, he was on Russell and Brown. And a matter of fact, Tommy Hearn's mother, Lazy, La- she used to hang out at the club on Russell Barnes. She'd tell you the same story. Tommy Hearn's mother, she's still alive today. Mm. Any of Amanda Stewart wife, they're all right there on Russell and Cloud in Detroit. About seven number one. Mm. Talk to me, brother. <laughs> That's a lot, man. That's a lot to intake, man. You know, uh, yeah, Yusef Shaw, uh, what do you know about the. the the house bombing and, and the car and the alleged car alleged car bombing potential car bombing when you talk about this brother. when when you talk about bombing house, when i got that way brother I wanted to smack the use of show here. You sending somebody in the house with children, children, bro. That is crazy, bro. And one day, years later. Too far from the phone. And, I mean, yeah, you got to clear people. Years later, we said, i never forget, Mike Tyson, Alice Stewart. Mm. We down in the city. And the conversation that we was talking about kids, man. Me, Bob Lee at that time was the president of the IBF. And Anderson, we have Carl King, all of us, we was eating. And it came up. It came up, bro. And I was saying, so somebody said, uh, Yusuf Shaw loves the children. They go to chapel. I said, that nigga don't love no, no children, man. That nigga tried to kill Malcolm's children. So we got the um, I said, Joseph. I stopped calling him, so I said, Joseph, you know I know what you did, bro. We have to ask them, if, 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 if you're a guest at the hotel, they'll give you the code. You got to use it then. They might have a different code. Send your husband over to get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see what I'm saying, brother? So Yusuf Shaw hated me on the heat. The other time I see him, I say, you, are you plotting to kill anybody else, children? Bro, that broke my heart, man. He gave that order, bro. His children, they know that he gave that order because they was grown when that order came. Happened in teenagers when that order came down. Bro, to give order, 
to give the order, bro, to kill children on a cold night, then a week later you get the order to kill their father? Bro, that's something them girls still wrestle with, bro. What was the name on the sh- What was the one name on the show with Abdul Rahim and then Nephew Hill? Uh, uh, what, what was her name, Brother Fred? I can't recall. That's not the one that died, is it? I don't know, be honest with you. I don't know who you're speaking about. One of them, one of them, see, one of them I know very well, other than I know them all. I know them all as a kid. But later on, I got closer to the one that became my buddy that I would make him get my ticket was the one that worked at the UN. That wasn't the one, was it, Fred? I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. One of them that died got to be one of the twins because they said she was 58. Mm. I think the one that was with with Abdul Rahim on that TV show and she was three or two when, when her father died, she had to be more than 58. She would be more than 58 now, right? Uh, when did he die? Oh, oh, okay, now listen. They said that the one that just died this year was 58. Oh, okay. So she the did. one that was on the show with Abdul Rahim and that nephew and sister that did the show, she was three when his father died. Okay. So how would she be this year if she was three when her father died? Uh, 56, 59, somewhere in there, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105, 15, 53, plus 60. She would be 60. Yes. So it can't be her. It got to be one. The one I know, but anyway, the one I know, Dice, Nick, A, and Bob, A, and here, get sick to him. When it was you in, I became more close. Even though I know them all, I came more close to her because she loved the boxing. She would always come around. Um, Atala Shabazz. She was six. The, the oldest one, Atala, the oldest one, the little, the red one, the old, all the way to Koopy. Yes. She was six, right? Yes. But she born in 59. Right. So it wasn't her. It got to be one of the twins that returned to her. But anyway, anyway, all of them hated use of shelf. Mm-hmm. Even in their lady, in their in their early years of becoming mothers and entrepreneurs, they hated use of shelf. On her, guess what he told me? <laughs> when he died, Billy Shabazz said he should have been there. That's what I was I never heard her say that, but I heard her have dislike for Yusuf Shaw. All of them hated the chapter. Mm. Even today, one of, one of his one of, one of his grandchildren found out, I guess one of the, one of, one of, one of the other girls' children that they don't talk about, one of the granddaughters, mm-hmm. was attending Houston Shaw last year. So when they found out who Houston Shaw really was, she moved her membership. Mm. The aunt and the mother made her move her membership from that last year. Mm. That's how much today they still hate Houston Shaw's name. Mm. So as for the car bomb spray, the brother, I don't know that brother well, but I knew of the brother, but I knew know for a fact that you should show gave the order. Mm. That's all I can speak on. I can't speak on the brother that did it. I don't know him that well. I know of the brother, know the brother, but the brother, but the, the word and true word that you should show gave the order because nothing came out of seven that you should give the order. Because right. at that time, you should show had more power than Paracon. Paracon was the assistant minister. Mm. And he was assistant minister in New York and he was still still handling the Muslim affair in, in Boston because Sister Ella, Malcolm had half sister, she and said, uh, watch that snake. Watch so that snake don't like my brother. She said that when when Paracon took over in Boston, she said, I don't trust him because he don't like my brother. 
and, and her son that's alive today will tell you that. Her son that's alive today will tell you how much their late mother, Malcolm's sister, hated what you call mm. You said Shaw. Yeah. What was... To, to my knowledge, uh -huh. is, is, it, is was, have you heard anything? Is Reginald still alive? Is who? Reggie. Reginald. I don't know. I know it's one left. I think all the rest of them is gone. That's what I thought. But anyway, getting back to the bomber. And that that was his doing. Uh, did I did I ask you a question about the fire bombing the day after? You, you, well, you didn't you, you didn't speak about the day after, no. Did, did you ask me something about the fire bomb? Yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did. I did. Okay, on the fire bomb, see that fire bomb came from the Godfather himself. He should make him sweat. The Godfather gave that order of heart. The Godfather gave that order. He said, "He gone, my brother gone now. We gonna go at them niggas," mm -hmm. and they gave the order. It wasn't one of the Malcolm guys. It was one of the Malcolm guys was told that the order was going to come out, but the order came from the Godfather himself, Mr. John. Mm. That he gave the order because it was left in shame. At that day, Sister, Sister, Sister Collins, she became the acting head of the OIU because mm. Betty had no strength to do nothing. Mm. Betty was in shock. She knew she was going and coming. They were still getting threatened. Even after they killed him, used to sell with his clown ass, they were still threatening his sister. Because mm. if you try to kill all of them before, you think you're going to let up because the head is gone? Mm. He hated this woman for no reason, bro. Mm. And the fire bombing came from the Godfather, people himself, through one of Malcolm's right hand men. But the fire bombing, that, that came because they were trying to make him pay. Had he listened to them, he might have been here today. Wow. If he listened to the Godfather in Jeremiah, the Godfather himself said, Let me go get them now. Let me send my soldiers from now. They ain't no match for my crew. Mm. But now they didn't want no bloodshed. That's why he ended up paying the ultimate price because he didn't want no bloodshed with the most brother. Isn't that amazing? Huh? Isn't that amazing that he knew he believed? I believe he knew he was walking towards his death and he didn't want them. Well, he knew. He knew, but he wouldn't listen. Mm. He knew, but he wouldn't listen. See, he was the type of guy. Got to remember, man. Came out the penitentiary, came out in the street. He always did it his way. Right. He did it his way. And that's what happened, Brother Fred. Let me say this to you, man. Until. Now, I don't know if you heard this or not. But I'm telling you what I know. Not what I heard. I knew for a while that Betty was close to the New World Order. Not saying that she did it, but if you search your records, do the homework, Yourself, the New World Order, all them guys loved the Malcolm. This is what I'm saying to you. The New World Order loved the Malcolm. A lot of them fathered Malcolm. A lot of them was in the nation. A lot of them come out of seven. The New World Order, you hear what I just said? It was alleged that she was close to the New World Order. Not saying that she convinced them to order in 1973. I don't know. But I knew that a lot of members of the New World Order, she was close to because she knew them when they were young soldiers in Temple, in Temple Number 7. Mm. You hear what I just said? Right. She was led close to the New World Order. I know she knew a lot of them brothers personally. Mm. I know them brothers. They got pictures with her today that I can better bear back up what I'm saying. So I ain't going to tell you order nothing that I can't back up. It is what it is. But if you ask me, my personal opinion, 
I believe she gave the order for New World Order mm. to go get James. Because mm. you can't, because you couldn't get Yusuf. Because Yusuf has, Yusuf has some of the niggas around him. <laughs> Let me tell you, something. Yusuf was the captain. He had more niggas around him after that situation than Malcolm, than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm. But they had more security after 1965. Elijah didn't go nowhere about 10 or 15 guys, seven pages in his back and seven pages in his front. You notice he didn't, he didn't go out that much after that situation. But until Yusuf Shaw died, every time, this is no lie, but every time he used to be in the dressing room, ask Don King and Carl and Timmy Witherspoon, all the fighters, Aaron Snowwell. Every time somebody, we had the dressing room, do lot. Every time somebody come dressing room, Yusuf Shaw would look behind the shoulder. Who come here, Brother Captain? I said, man, you the child, I don't know who come here. What you talking for? That shit you did to Malcolm? Everybody tell you, I, I used to ride him until he died. Mm. So that was bad. And, brother, what I was told, part of that fine, mama, one of his nephews paid a part of it. I don't know. Mm. Of the fine, mama, of, of the house in February of 65. So that's what it was, but I don't know for sure, Brother Fred, but all that mess, all that corruption at the head body, I know for a fact that it broke Sister Claire's heart. Her spirit was so kind, brother, you love to meet her. Anybody you know that's alive in the holler, my old sister tell you what kind of sister she was. All right, now, what's up next, brother? That's all I got. I got to start my show. <laughs> you got so much out of me, and I need you. You done got two hours and 33 minutes out of me. Two hours and 11 minutes. Boy, that's the best thing I ever did. You got me old, bro, because I owed you. And now it's, it's so cold in New York, man. It's right. cold as hell here. Uh, let it's me cold end, as hell. Uh, uh, What's that next? Well, talk to me. Uh, let me end the podcast real quick. I'm about to end it. Um, I, I genuinely appreciate you coming on, Mr. Muhammad. And uh, gave us a lot of information. Now we know. <laughs> that. Now we know the story of William X. Bradley, you were a great friend of William X. Bradley. Um, and uh, um, he was I, my brother. I yeah. also, when we put him, he's my Muslim brother. Mm -hmm. It was all right. It is what it is. May God please him. But did, the fact that he said, said, said it is what it is, what the court record said it is. Did, did, he, did, did his energy change throughout the years as it pertains to 65? And, and the murder of Malcolm X and him being a part? Did, did he show a level of remorse in his older years? But to, when I, the last few times I've seen him, before he run to Allah, I bumped into him at the mosque or at some fight, some affair. It seems like he was more, more at ease because he was older than he, he was more the path of redemption mm. of all the things that we've done. And we all have to get older. And beg God for guidance, and beg God for mercy, and beg God for forgiveness. Mm. From what I've seen, from the times I've seen him certain fighting at Don King's declaration, at Don King's press conference, to my knowledge, when I'm observing, I believe that he was begging God for mercy, mm. for guidance, and forgiveness. Mm. Now, I can't speak on his connection with the mayor and none of them, because we didn't get in each, each other brother's business of doing it. But I would say the times in boxing that, that I was near and there and had to do certain things for certain fighters they've been involved with. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to speak on what I know people, Bob Child Comrade, customers, uh, uh, listeners, on what I know. Mm -hmm. The times that I was around that fight, to me, in his later years, as we all should do, beg God for mercy and forgiveness and, and begging to keep us on the right path. I want to testify to what I know mm -hmm. and what I've seen in later years when pertaining to boxing and other events that we was at. Did you guys? Did you guys have conversations about being betrayed by the Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad, and and uh, like how 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 you thought one thing and when actually out in your older years you knew it was something different? Well, I can say. For me, mm -hmm. with a lot of brothers that were close to him, a lot of brothers that were today, 
we felt that Elijah tricked us. Mm. And I said that on a many occasions that we that certain you get to talk I said, man, thank God for you, ma'am Wolf D. Muhammad, because his father tricked us. And a lot of times he was in the room, he would just shake his head, I'll leave Muhammad I made, Carl King, Don Sun, all of them would shake their head. Say Elijah really tricked y'all, didn't he? Had us robbing banks and shit for between us, we robbing banks, sending money to Chicago, and we ain't got nothing to return. Mm. That's the way I felt. And that's where I know that he felt. And he was very proud. He didn't speak on much. Mm. But he heard what I was saying. Would shake his head and say, God is the best I know of. Mm. But a lot of brothers that's around today that was with us, such as Ali, a lot of the old soldiers that come out of 25 under him, mm-hmm. Brother Elijah did a job on us, brother. Mm. Mm. And what I will say is, I believe Whatever the brother did, 65, 75, 73, 69, 68, whatever he did, I believe that on the end, he asked God for mercy and for guidance, not like you to shout, asking God for mercy and for guidance, and still saying that Malcolm and, whole, Malcolm and his whole family is been in big honor. Now you gonna call these kids, these young girls, been in honor, and they didn't know what was going on. That's how stupid he used to shout was. Right. You taught it. Right. right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Brother, I believe I've been a service to you two hours and fifty seven minutes. I believe I helped you. I believe I got on that path. When you coming in? Uh uh, let me end this. I appreciate you, uh uh um Mr. Leon Muhammad. It was a pleasure. And uh don't forget boxing eleven eighty eight hat cash app boxing eleven eighty eight. Is that it? Yes, sir. Uh money sign boxing eleven eighty eight, support him, get the book. Uh, and uh, thank him for uh, giving us. So anyways, Barbershop Conversations, man. Don't forget Nine Wives. Click the link below. Click the link above about the film about Elijah Muhammad. And uh, uh, and uh, we talk to you guys soon. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys.